You're watching Unrendered on AKTV. I'm Tony Redisford and I'm chatting with Dr. Donna Brown. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Aconcepts. Dr. Brown, so you, you've got a fairly big organization, as you, as you said in the last segment, and um, you're here as part of the project, but the Eastern Caribbean part of the project. So show me the structure of that. What, um, what is the structure of the Eastern Caribbean World Pediatric Project? Okay. Um, in 2002, when we started our work in St. Vincent, we realized that all of the other nations that are close by have mm -hmm. similar issues. So we're talking about St. Lucia, Barbados, right. Grenada, Grenada, Dominica, Dominica. Anguilla, Antigua. Right. All of the countries that are similar in population size have the same issues that St. Vincent's St. Vincent does. They mm -hmm. have children who have critically um, serious conditions yes. that we don't have the practitioners and the equipment to care for. Yes. So w instead of duplicating everything in every country, which seems impractical, yeah. our um, Susan Rickman, our CEO, got this idea that maybe we could have something we call an initiative. She really called it a hub concept at the time. Right. That we have St. Vincent as the hub and that we invite children from St. Lucia, Grenada, Dominica, etc. here when our teams come, when mm -hmm. our diagnostic and surgical teams come. Mm -hmm. So in 2008, um, Susan and Dr. Dada and Sister King and myself, um, and actually um, Lansford Week was PS at the time yeah, and he went yeah. with us. Yes, and PS of, of the, health. Of, yeah. of health, yes. Yeah. And he went with us and we visited Grenada and St. Lucia and we asked, the, we knew the pediatricians there, mm -hmm. and we asked them what they thought. We went to the ministers of health and with our uh, idea of, of this, and they said this would be great because they had the same pro problem. They would have a child who had a heart murmur or rheumatic heart disease that mm -hmm. needed care, and they had nothing to tell the parents that they could do to help. So yeah. there was this lack of hope, you know, one gets a disease and one doesn't do well or even dies. So we said, well, what we'll do is we will ask our in-country representatives. Now, one thing that has really changed our work in every country that we have a comprehensive, where we have a comprehensive program, is having someone in-country to be there. And for St. Vincent, we actually have two people. So Sister Jackie Brown King has been with us for since, since before 2008, right. when we realized that would be a nice addition to our program to really make it meaningful. So that there's someone here who can identify the children mm -hmm. and facilitate the teams when we come, etc. So we, she is now in charge of making sure that all of the other countries know when we're coming. She sends out each year the schedule of who's coming when, and then she communicates with the pediatricians. They let her know the children that need to come, mm -hmm. and then the, their, the arrangements to get them here for our program um, So occurs. essentially St. Vincent is the hub yes. for the Eastern Caribbean Correct. part of the World um, Pediatric Project. Correct. And in October, Susan Rickman, our CEO, came to and spoke at the OECS Ministers of Health conference. There was mm -hmm. a, a conference where the Ministers of Health from um, the OECS countries got together to discuss the health care needs. Right. And as part of that, she gave a report on what had occurred thus far in this Eastern Caribbean initiative, encouraging to continue to develop this so that it could be even more impressive. Like, f since, since 2008, when we've done this concept, or since, actually since we've been working in, in, East, in St. Vincent and the, and the hub concept, we've, we've brought about 240 kids up to the U.S. for health care. And about 60 percent of those are from St. Vincent, which right. means about 40 percent are from some of these other countries. So it has worked. It, we thought this should work, but now we know it works right. because we know these kids need, need difficult surgeries done as well. And when we come here, we do surgery on the children from St. Kitts, St. Lucia. Um, I have a where, child wherever yes wherever I have a child who had a came to to Richmond for a cor to have a corneal transplant she's from St. Lucia she's mm. back this week for me to see have how she's doing and yeah. we're going to do her other eye soon and we'll bring mm. her back up to Richmond for mm. that mm. Um, so the structure is in country reps teams coming consistently the communication with the other countries and having pediatricians there who will see the patients 
pre- and post-operatively. Mm -hmm. I communicate with the pediatricians who send the patients to me and say, this is what we were able to do. This is the follow-up. This might be a diagnostic tool that needs to be done for us to consider what needs to be done next. But that coordinated effort. So it really takes that. The other thing, I think it takes the cooperation of all of the administrations of the hospitals, right. um, especially here, and certainly the Minister, Ministry of Health and Chief Medical Officer, etc. The, the work that you do re relies on the infrastructure, if I can call it that, the equipment that's there at the hospital, etc. And I believe that um, the Mustique Charitable Trust, I think it was, donated a pediatric unit, if you want to yes. call it that, um, to the hospital. If you, if you may, just describe what, what does that contain? What is, what is the unit? It, it, this, this was one of the most exciting things. And mm. the pediatric ward did need to be renovated in general and needed updated equipment. But also we needed uh, what we call a, a NICU, a neonatal intensive care unit. Right. Um, so one, so the, the charitable trust and one particular family um, who was very interested in helping us did donate it, ended up costing about 2.5 million, 2.6 million, something US like that, dollars. US dollars. Yeah. And in doing so, we have a NICU, a PICU, which is a pediatric intensive care unit. Um, and when I visited this week to the NICU, there were four little tiny premature babies there. So we're saving babies in St. Vincent at 26, 27 weeks gestational age when we couldn't do that before. Right. And part of that is the renovation. Part of it is the, the people, the fact that we have uh, dedicated pediatricians who have the skill set to do this. We had a, a young lady, a nurse from St. Louis, come and spend one year here. She's a NICU nurse. I'm getting mm -hmm. off track a little, but my, my point is you, you have to have the people to work in the pediatric ward, otherwise the pediatric ward is of no value. Right. But the, in that ward now, we have the equipment we need to save the young babies to, to when we have an intense, um, a pediatric patient who needs intensive care therapy, we have that there. There's actually a small burn unit as well for that need. So it, it, it looks nice, but it functions better and it's much safer and uh, for the things that we need to do. And that hopefully is just the tip of the iceberg as to what we can get from an infrastructure and building standpoint as we go forward. What about maintenance? Because um, you're not always here and right. you're, you're just the doctors in the medical team, but um, the medical technicians and so on that are required to maintain um, the NICU and the PQ, you call it? PQ, yes. PQ, sir. right. Yeah. Um, are they locally um, trained? Are the locals trained to do that? or To know, just maintain the equipment and yes. things? Um, I know that Mr. Henderson is the person with whom I've worked most, and he's mm -hmm. always helping us if the microscope goes on the blink for the ophthalmology uh, section of the theater. Um, and so he and his team are the ones that would make s certain that everything is functional. And, and that, of course, is identified by the pediatricians and nurses who are working there. And if something is, is not proper, then the, the maintenance uh, group from the hospital would be in charge of caring for right. that. And when, you, when you're not here, for example, you're here, you, you know, your team is here now. And well, maybe I should ask the question now. How long are you typically here for when the team comes? We normally are here for a week to 10 days. We came last Thursday. Right. I did clinic on Friday. Dr. Blanchet, who's doing plastic surgery, did hers on Sunday. And then we operate all week. So the Sounds team- very intense because you're dealing with people from, <laughs> you're dealing with kids from St. Vincent and also kids come in um, who have been lined up to come from the other islands, and um, you, you're doing that in 10 days. It's intense. <laughs> we worked hard last night. I, the, the, the Dr. Blanchet's team, I think, finished it. They got home about 8, right. 8.30. So right. there's some long days, um, but that's why we're here. That's we, right. we come, and we want, to, we want to be busy when we come because there's a big need, mm -hmm. and we try to stay long enough to be able to do those things that have been found for us. And one of the things that helps is we know pretty much what's what the, the list of children that we're going to see so that we can prepare and bring our equipment and for Dr. Blanchet since she does plastic surgery and reconstructive surgery and that can be so diverse mm -hmm. she often will receive the pictures of the children and understand if it's a cleft lip or palate repair right. or a burn contracture or something such as this then she has the ability to say well I need this piece of equipment I need that piece of equipment and plan ahead to do that and that makes it work better mm -hmm. we also have another um, part of the program that I didn't mention earlier that's a telemedicine right. feature where 
where we have a, an, in our office in Richmond, we have a camera and here we do and a monitor and we can converse and see the patients here while we're in Richmond and we can do some just logistics and planning with right. our in-country representatives and seeing the patients. I used to do post-op clinic that way where I would go and they would bring the children and Dr. Dada would be there now that we have the ophthalmologist here who can help us with that. Right. We're not required to do that. But um, that's been a real good outreach for us. So when you're not here, which is mm -hmm. the other 350 days of the right. year, um, it's just local staff basically in the mm -hmm. pediatric um, unit. So clearly what this program has brought um, to St. Vincent, using it as the hub, bringing the, the, the equipment that is there to run your, primarily your program, but for the 350 days of the year when you're not here, that is the same unit and facilities that they use for basically the population, children of St. Vincent and the Grannies right. that um, need that sort of work. That's exactly right. And when I was talking with Dr. Dada as I was touring the new facility that opened in June, um, I, said, I said to her, I said, well, you know that um, it's not about the place, it's about the people, people. in the program because if you were not here doing a good job and if we were not um, in need of such things you know a, a pretty unit like this would have be of no value it's really the people who staff it day in and day out one of the goals has been to train the nurses especially so that those taking care of the babies are the ones that take the care, care of the babies those 365 days a year mm -hmm. as you put it which is so so apropos they need to have special training to be able to care for these little ones so that they survive. And so the specialty care training for the nurses has been a part of the program and we've had good response from the hospital administration with regards to this and we're, we continue to work for these things. So it is the day in and day out success with pediatrics that makes us be able to do this. This could not be a hub if we didn't have the infrastructure for primary and secondary care so that when we come and do the tertiary care, we can leave and know that things are going to be fine with our patients. I think all of us who travel to do this kind of work, the last thing we would want to do is come here and do something that when we leave, becomes a, a disaster, if you will. We want yeah. to be sure we have the infrastructure. And St. Vincent and um, the pediatric program here has proven to be that. What do you say that, um, and because you're talking about it's, it's a unit that really delivers primary and secondary care. Would you say, and I'm gonna close out this segment with this question and when we come back, we'll answer it. Okay. Would you say that um, what we have here now, that particular pediatric um, facility, would you class it as being world class? You can hold the answer okay. on, on, when, when we come back from the break. This is Unrendered on IKTV. You'll get the answer to that question and more when we come back from the break.